Let's take a closer look at the new Lamborghini Temerario engine and everything we know so far. To understand what's happening right now, we have to understand the current Huracan engine and its history. Let's take a look at this. A standard VW Golf Mark IV with a 2-liter 4-cylinder engine in 1998 had a bore of 82.5 mm and a stroke of 92.8 mm. These were the standard dimensions for all VW Group engines with half a liter capacity per cylinder. When Audi took over Lamborghini and wanted to create a smaller Lambo to make the brand more accessible for a wider range of customers, the idea was to create a V10 engine with the same company standard dimensions. So they could use the same machines and carry over parts. The result was a 5 liter V10, but they wanted to create a high revving engine. Unfortunately, this was a long stroke engine because the dimensions for bore and stroke came from their mass production engines, which have low RPMs and are focused on torque rather than engine speed. In order to keep engines reliable, mean piston speed, so the average speed the piston is doing, was always kept at around 16 meters per second for production cars. And even for race engines, 20 meters per second was a limit that no one wanted to cross. Higher piston speeds create more friction, there is a higher risk of lubrication issues and pressure losses. So the new V10 engine crossed that limit by quite some margin, resulting in new challenges during the development and power loss in customer hands. Another standard dimension within the company was the 84.5 mm bore of the Audi 4.2 liter V8 engine. Stroke again is the same as in the rest of the company. For the standard, slow-running 4.2 liter V8, average piston speed is at pretty exactly 20 meters per second. So the limit you don't want to cross. But for the RS4B7, so the same engine but now with much higher revs, piston speeds reach over 24 meters per second again, just like the Lambo V10. The result was that many customers complained about power loss and that the car doesn't have the promised 420 horsepower. Instead, they had around 10% less. Lamborghini and Audi then used the same bore for their facelift model with now 4.2 liters. The engine speed was slightly increased again, which pushed piston speeds to 24.7 meters per second. And today, with the current Huracan, we still have the same high revving, long stroke V10 engine, which was born from an idea to use the same company's standard dimensions everywhere. In comparison, let's have a look at another iconic high revving engine of that time, the BMW S85 engine of the E60 M5. This engine was built for this purpose and you can see a much larger bore and much shorter stroke. So for a similar RPM, the piston speeds here stay below the 20 meters per second. So what we see here is that there is not really much more power in the 4.2 liter Lambo V10 if you keep it naturally aspirated. Its design was a compromise from the very beginning, but they could earn good money with it for the last 20 years. But now it's time for something new. Basically, a V6 turbo engine plus hybrid power would be the way to go, just like Ferrari and McLaren. But it seems like Lamborghini wanted to bring a V8 in their new small model. So 650 to 700 horsepower from the combustion engine plus 150 from the hybrid system would be the target to match the competition. 650 horsepower from a 3 liter V6 turbo engine is not a problem. Instead, Lamborghini decided for a 4 liter V8 bi-turbo with 800 horsepower. And 800 horsepower is not a problem with such an engine, so there is potential for more. But at the same time, Lamborghini made this a high revving engine with up to 10,000 RPM. That on the other hand means they don't need much boost to reach that power and can instead tune the engine to a high torque plateau so you can use maximum torque over a wide RPM range. So why are they doing this? Especially for sports car manufacturers like Lamborghini, it's important to lower their fleet emissions. And that means cars should burn less fuel on the test bench during the test cycle. If you have a turbocharged engine with lots of torque, you can run at lower engine speeds and have an engine with less capacity. And if you have an electric motor, which can drive your car, you have the advantage to not have any emissions during parts of the cycle. So you can rate such a car with very low fuel consumptions and hence emissions. 
And that's the reason why the Temerario will use the same gearbox as the Reveralto, just with another electric motor. The Reveralto has the electric motor sitting on top and adding 150 horsepower and 150 newton meters. For the Temerario, the electric motor sits between engine and gearbox and adds 150 horsepower and 300 newton meters. If you want to know more about the details of the Reverialto gearbox and its special design, check out my other video in the description. So the customer will get a high revving flat plane V8, which will feel like a naturally aspirated engine, but with turbo torque and hybrid boost. But we can also guess from here that the new Temerario could be a lot heavier than the competition due to its larger engine, heavy gearbox and possibly even additional front electric motors. Basically, Power-wise, the V8 Turbo would have been enough for the Reveralto as well, so both models could have the same drivetrain. But it was a good idea to stick with the V12 for the bigger model. A bit strange is that Lamborghini introduced a newly developed 3.8 liter V8 with cold V, so outside sitting turbochargers, for their LMDH race car. And now they introduce a hot V 4 liter V8 for their road car. Maybe both engines have something in common, but we don't know for sure at this point. So, how do you like the latest developments at Lamborghini and their new drivetrains for the future? Let me know in the comments below and check out my other videos for more.